My name is Andrew Nix, and I would like to take you through our presentation this afternoon entitled Market Lab, Future of Spectrum Allocations in North America. This presentation was originally given at a panel session at the LTE North America show in Dallas 2014. I'd like to start with a brief biography. I received my B.Eng. and Ph.D. degrees from the University of Bristol in 1989 and 1993, respectively. I'm currently Professor of Wireless Communication Systems at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. I'm also the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, and I head up the Communication Systems and Networks Research Group. My main interests include broadband wireless communications, antennas and radio wave propagation, Wi-Fi and cellular network optimization, including millimeter wave communication systems. I was a founder member of the Etsy Res 10 committee that ran from 92 to 95. This committee opened up the 5 GHz wireless LAN bands and developed Europe's first wireless LAN standard, known as Hyperlan. I'd like to start by talking about spectrum developments below 1 GHz. The core 3GPP cellular bands, 900 MHz, 1.8 GHz, 2.1 GHz and 2.6 GHz, will all continue to be used for new LTE networks and for capacity upgrades. However, the lower frequency bands, the 800 MHz area, will be used for LTE deployments to help to provide ubiquitous mobile broadband. Also, co-primary UHF band allocations could well pave the way for future joint integrated multimedia solutions for mobile broadband and broadcast TV solutions. At Bristol, we have just completed a research project looking to provide broadcast TV and multimedia over a standard Wi-Fi link. If you'd like to know more, please use the link shown in the slide. So how do we unblock new bands below 6 GHz? Well, small cell deployments will clearly play a pivotal role in high capacity hotspots. Also, future spectrum could come from reallocating sections of the 3.5 GHz band. At the moment, 400 MHz is being used here for fixed broadband wireless access and satellite services. Technical innovations are also likely to play their role. Areas such as cognitive radio, software-defined networks, massive MIMO, and network virtualization are all set to revolutionize spectrum usage. How will novel spectral sharing methods unlock the use of new bands? And will this predominantly be used to address rural broadband? Also, can we offload cellular best effort traffic into the unlicensed bands at 5 GHz? Could we even consider 2.4 GHz? Will software-defined networking make offloading to heterogeneous radio standards a seamless task as we move towards 5G networks? Dedicated spectrum is obviously preferred by the carriers. However, to meet 5G traffic demands, new regulatory regimes will be required, which are based on the idea of the sharing of radio spectrum and sharing of network infrastructure. Software-defined networking will be a key technology. This allows multi-operator network virtualization. Bristol is working on a new five-year project led by Professor Dimitra Simeonadou to address these particular issues. If you'd like to know more, please use the link provided. Cognitive technologies also make it possible to share spectrum using radio environmental awareness techniques and interference management. Authorized shared access is a regulatory concept which allows spectrum sharing under well-defined conditions. And finally, Massive MIMO offers unprecedented spectral efficiency in the standard microwave bands. But is the technique viable? Will it work in realistic channel conditions? Sharing spectrum between network operators is a good idea, rather than dividing it up between them. It makes it far easier for any one operator to cope with temporary peaks in demand. Mutual interference can be minimised by the use of joint databases and cognitive technologies. Indoor small cells are key to providing high data rates at locations where 80% of traffic is expected to occur. Such cells could use LTE in the 3.5 GHz band, as mentioned earlier. Now I'd like to look at convergence of 5G and millimeter wave networks. There is the availability of huge amounts of bandwidth at 28 GHz, 60 GHz and 70 to 80 GHz, the so-called millimeter wave bands. And these, coupled with the opportunity to use large antenna arrays at the transmitter and receiver, make this attractive for high capacity 5G local area networks. I will be presenting later at the LTE North America show on 5G unleashing millimeter wave communications. This presentation is also available on YouTube. We also need to look at traffic offloading to unlicensed bands, such as 60 GHz, using the 802.11 AD standard, also known as YGIG. Growing traffic volumes are undoubtedly a challenge for current carriers, but with the right spectral bands, 
on the right radio technologies, this represents a fantastic opportunity for continued growth. I'd now like to run through a number of suggested questions that I believe this presentation has uncovered. So spectrum demands, will these be driven by rural or by urban developments? Affordability is crucial. How important is spectrum harmonization to enable economies of scale and global roaming? What level of spectral sharing is required and how exactly will this be regulated? To what extent will millimetre wave bands solve the spectrum crunch? What technical breakthroughs are on the horizon? Are phone designs already compromised by supporting too many bands? And how will carriers integrate multiple standards spread over licensed, lightly licensed and unlicensed spectrum? Thank you for listening to this presentation and I hope you found the content useful.